Counseling Techniques, Linking Domains of Experience, with Sandra Collins and Gina Ko. Counselors may invite clients to build links across domains of experience, to co-create a multidimensional picture of clients presenting concerns, and to foster shared understanding of the interconnections. These domains of experience include biological, psychological, thoughts, feelings, and actions, social, cultural, and systemic. Hi, Gina. Welcome back. Hi, Sandra. Last time we were talking about balance, and we were talking about how to um, navigate the changes in your schedule in a way that was going to work for you and um, work for other people in your life. Providing transparency overviewing. And today I'm wondering if you want to continue talking about that or if there's something else you'd like to talk about. Checking perceptions. Mm, Yeah, I would love to continue to talk about that, Sandra. Okay. So one of the things I was thinking about um, after the conversation last week was how this um, struggle to balance fits with some of the sociocultural expectations around you as a woman, perhaps as a BIPOC person. Linking domains of experience. Does that fit for you to talk a little bit about that in terms of balance? Checking perceptions. Uh, Yes, actually fits very well because I've been thinking about our last conversation and how after I left the session I thought hmm there's a, there's more to it right as a yeah the woman of color as a, coming to Canada young as a refugee as a, a mother as an academic and as a therapist you know that th- I feel that there's generally you know when we just look at you know women in general there's a lot of kind of expectations like oh you shall be able to you know if you have children you know mother well you know cook great meals and go to work and make a living and see all your children's extracurricular activities and you know and do great at work so you know and I think after we talked last time I thought about wow the dominant narratives are real you know and I, I think I've internalized it all my life and hence I brought in that topic of balance how can I do it all and do it all so well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and do it all is a little bit different than saying how can I find balance in my life exploring inconsistencies Mm -hmm. yes yes because when when I think about do it all and do it all so well, there's a lot of pressure to be perfect in all those areas. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond balance. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's being this perfect woman, person of color, mom, Mm -hmm. therapist, and more. So when you pause and think about those two things, how, how do you imagine putting those two things together? I'm going to have a balanced life and I'm going to be the perfect mother, person of color, therapist, mm-hmm. et cetera. Questioning. Yeah, this is important, Sandra, because I'm now I'm thinking mm-hmm, good enough is good enough, right? Yeah. I mean, even when we look at uh, counselor education, when we uh, I've taught many, many courses in counseling and some of the um, conversations we have is it can't be this perfect therapist. There's no such thing. We make mistakes. Even last time when we debriefed, we talked about humor and self-disclosure, right? So I think good enough is good enough. And you can always strive, but perfection is not attainable. It's not healthy. Mm-hmm. So what are the other contexts of your life where you find yourself tipping away from the good enough and into the perfectionist? Linking domains of experience. Mm. Now that I think about it, 
it's actually not too many areas. I know one for sure is writing. <laughs> I don't know writing, my writing. I don't know if I, I don't think I even mentioned this last session, Sandra, but I've been thinking about, you know, I, I write for the PAA, the Psychologists Association of Alberta. I'm, I'm writing, you know, chapters, you know, with you and this book here, creating this work. Um, I think with that part of my world, I'm harsher on myself because I think this is permanent. People can see my work and read it over and over again. I better be if not perfect, near perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the permanency of that is an interesting thing. Reflecting meaning. And I found that even reading stuff that I've written, say, 10 years ago, and I think, oh, man. <laughs> and on some level, it's why I'm still writing, because I realize, um, particularly in the areas that we're working on in anti-racism, etc., and and maybe even more so for me as a white person, some of what I didn't get 10 years ago, now I'm thinking, oh, wow, I really need to um, put a different view out there. Self-disclosing. So what is it for you about the, about the permanency of that, that you find most intimidating or that you worry about? Questioning. Mm -hmm. You know, writing is so interesting because it is a moment in time, right? It's a snapshot in time. So, and I think for me, what does help is I, I, I continuously talk about learning and unlearning and transforming and, you know, learning with, right? So that, I think that helps so that it's the reader who reads it. Hopefully they have a sense that this is not the end all be all, you know, this is what Gina does and this is what she believes in and period, right? Or this, right? I think yeah, now that I think about it, I, I, I open up my writing with, this is my learning journey. It's a lifelong journey. Mm. So I think that does help with the nerves, I guess, that, or the, with the, the knowing that it, it is permanent when people read it. Yeah. It is an interesting connection to our um, debrief about self-disclosure. So, you know, the more we can be transparent about ourselves and the, and the challenges we face and our growing, our constant growing, I think that that um, maybe takes a little bit of the pressure off in terms of the perfectionism. Reflecting meaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gina, when we were talking a second ago about um, perfectionism and that coming out in your writing it reminded me of the self-critic that you were talking about before providing transparency and I'm wondering if the self-critic comes out also in the area of self-care because you've talked a lot about self-care and the importance of self-care and I'm wondering how how the self-critic or perfectionism and balance those themes play out in that particular area Linking domains of experience. Well, I think, Sandra, with the self-care topic, uh, I, I actually feel like I need to strive for more, per, more, for the lack of a better word, more perfectionism in that area. I feel like I need up it. I, I need to, you know, I, need, I feel that I need a, a program where I keep to a routine and I do move more, exercise more, you know, uh, relax more. So I think with that part, I, I think I need to strive for more in that area. So that's an interesting thing because that's a contrast to some of the areas where you're talking about sort of lowering demand and here you're talking about increasing demand. Exploring inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. um, right? yeah. How do you think you might approach that in a way that doesn't trigger that perfectionist or the self critic questioning mm. um i think starting small helps uh, even today sandra this morning i thought you know i'm going to be sitting a lot today so i'm going to go downstairs to my exercise bike my equipment i'm going to aim for a 10 minute short workout right so that helped me actually i i think i did at least 15 minutes you know so kind of starting small and making it a daily habit and not feeling like I need to work out two hours a day, you know, five days a week, for example, it can be helpful. 
Hmm. And after you finish that 10 minute exercise, do you have any recollection of what the thoughts were that were going through your mind at that time? Questioning. I, yeah, I think I was thinking, I did it. <laughs> this is the first time in months that I actually allowed myself to go down to my basement where I have this mini gym to move, to, to, to work out. So it was success, even though it was only 10, 15 minutes. And the statement that you allowed yourself is kind of interesting because it's in some ways that's defying the demand, right? I'm going to allow myself permission yeah. to take care of myself. Reflecting meaning. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I caught myself saying that too. Yeah. Um, what kind of message do you pull from that? That might be an encourager, sort of an anti-perfectionist approach to increasing your wellness in this area questioning mm -hmm. um I, I i actually like the word increasing like it's about adding it's about inviting and increasing wellness right so yeah um, like so. yeah so gina maybe as you move forward this week and you know reflect back on some of the things that we've talked about that idea of decreasing and increasing um, fits well with the concept of balance, right? Because you're kind of like pulling a little, little bit of weight down here, adding a little bit more here in order to come up with the, come up with the sort of levels in various aspects of your life that are going to work well for you in terms of your overall wellness. Summarizing. Yeah, I, I like how you did this Sandra yes I think that this that, that balance right with the increasing and decreasing I, yeah I'm going to think more about that great glad that's helpful